province against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Well, welcome to uh, End of the Age on this good Thursday afternoon. I, I thank you for joining me today. I'm Dave Robbins with the End Time Ministries. And I'm going to talk to you today about preparing for the last days. This ministry specializes in the prophecies of the Bible. And we use current events daily to show you how prophecies written 2,000 to 2,500 years ago are coming to pass letting us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. We are truly living in the last days. And so I'm going to be talking to you today about a very important aspect of preparing for the last days. But before I get into that, I want to make a very special announcement. Uh, there's, we're going to be doing a prophecy. Irvin Baxter is going to be doing a prophecy conference this coming Saturday night in the Murphy, Texas area. And my daughter and son-in-law, Brandon and Holly Brewer, are going to be starting a new church in Murphy, Texas. And so we're launching that church by starting a prophecy conference and establishing a Bible study there. And so the prophecy conference is going to be held this Saturday at uh, July 30 at 6 p.m. And it's going to be at the Murphy Community Center at 205 North Murphy Road in Murphy, Texas. And a phone number to call to get a hold of somebody if you need to, you need directions or whatever. It's 214-707-9634. And it's right behind the Walmart in Murphy, Texas there. It's in like a little community center or something like that. And Irvin's going to be discussing such topics as uh, World War III is coming. Antichrist is alive and on the earth right now. And the mechanism for the mark of the beast is being put in place right now. So the title of the lesson is From Here to Armageddon, The World's Greatest Revival Just Ahead. So it's a very important lesson. It's one of our newest lessons that we're teaching. And Irvin's going to be in Murphy, Texas this coming Saturday night, 6 o'clock. So you won't want to miss that. If you're in the, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, especially up in the, the northeast side, uh, Garland, Plano, some of those areas, uh, Rockwall, Rowlett, you might want to come and join us at the conference. Most of us will be there. I'll be there. Irvin will be there. Uh, a lot of our family will be there and a lot of people from End Time. And help us launch this church in Murphy, Texas. And uh, it would be just a great time. We do prophecy conferences all over uh, the United States. And it's just such a good time when you get to get out and meet the pastors, meet different evangelists and, and people that are working uh, to further the, to build the kingdom of God. It's always a great time, and you get to see Irvin personally and hear him teach a, a lesson. And this, I can tell you, this lesson from here to Armageddon is a very, very eye-opening uh, lesson. You'll get to hear some new stuff you probably never heard before. And so it's, it's very, very important. And, and you, you might get to ask him some questions, go up around after the lesson's over, and, uh, and talk to him, uh, maybe buy some products, whatever you want to do. It's, a, it's always a great time. So join us this coming Saturday. Murphy, Texas, would be a, a great time sharing the Word of God and going through the prophecies of the Bible. So, preparing for the last days. It's, it's, it's a question we get here at all, all the time at end time. Hey, you guys say we're going through the last days. We're going to be here during the tribulation. How do I prepare for that? Well, I'm going to be covering one of the major factors of preparing. There's, there's probably a few things that you should be looking at doing but I'm going to cover one of the major things, ways you should be preparing, probably the number one way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the timeline because we can't go over the timeline enough. If, um, if the Lord should tarry, everyone under the sound of my voice will live through this final seven-year period. It's very, very key that you understand 
uh, what the events that will take place during that final seven year period. And the reason that we go over it over and over and over is because we're always going on new radio stations. Our market is changing all the time, our listening audience. And so we want to make sure that everybody out there knows what's going to happen just over the next few years because you need to prepare for that. That's one of the good things about prophecy. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. So in the end time, there are going to be people that have understanding of the prophecies to know what to what the people should do, what, what we can instruct indivi individuals to do in their life to help them prepare. And so that's where we're at. We're in the last days. It's easily proven. And so I'm going to walk you through the timeline, give you a few different scenarios here. And then I'm going to talk to you about the major, the number one thing you need to do to prepare to navigate your way through the troubled waters that are just ahead because you don't have to go through the times just ahead in fear mode. That's the, that's the thing you don't want to do. Get in fear mode and say, oh, I got to go bury myself in a hole somewhere. I can't make it through the times just ahead. That's not what the church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be doing. And we're supposed to be in evangelism mode and reaching and, and preaching and teaching the gospel all the way to the end. That's the mode we're functioning in, not in fear mode. If you get in fear mode, the devil will put you in a box and you can't do anything. So you don't want to get in fear mode. You want to get in evangelism mode so you can be up and about your father's business. So go with me today on just a small journey back in time. And as long as you're not driving your car, you can follow this exercise with me. Everyone out there, close your eyes and imagine that you're back in World War II, just over 70 years ago. Just imagine you're in World War II. And as your platoon marches across foreign soil towards the next exchange, you've got your marching orders, you're headed across there, you encounter a minefield. Somebody says, oh, stop, stop, stop. There's mines out ahead of us. And the enemy is encamped all around your destination. And, it's and your destination is just on the other side. The enemy's all around. The only option is straight ahead through the minefield. You've got to navigate your way through that. Well, immediately the lieutenant yells the command, okay, everybody, we're going through a minefold. Take out uh, a minefield. Take out your blindfolds and put them on. We've got a minefield to cross. So you say, well, well, hold on a minute. That doesn't seem right. I'm going to go across a minefield. Why in the world do I want to put on a blindfold? Nobody in his right mind would cross a minefield blindfolded. Yet this is exactly what it would be like to live through the next few years with little or no knowledge of end time events. There is a minefield set up ahead of us. You can liken those events to a minefield. And if you don't know what's coming, it would be like going through the minefield with a blindfold on. Thankfully, this doesn't have to be the case. The Bible has provided us with a very accurate timeline and explicit instructions to guide us through the dangerous events that lie just ahead. Even more importantly, the question has to be asked, how do I prepare for the turbulent times just ahead? What can I do to help me and my family in those times just ahead to prepare? I want to know. That's what these prophecies are given for. It gives us a view out ahead of us so that way we can know what's coming. Well, like I said before, this is one of the most common questions that we get here at the ministry. People call in all the time and say, hey, you guys teach a post-tribulation rapture because that's what the Bible teaches, so we have to teach that. So how can we prepare for that time period, the time, the, the, the tribulation just ahead, which is the final three and a half years of that seven year period. But we want to prepare for the seven year period because there's going to be things that happen all the way through. And so it's actually a great question. How do I prepare? So let's first start out by walking through the timeline and then we'll talk about the best way to prepare for the times just ahead. Once I've given you a few events that happen, then we'll stop uh, part of the way through and I'll say, okay, now put yourself in this scenario. So there is a, a seven year timeline given in scripture. It's the final seven years 
just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ and, uh, and, and the battle of Armageddon and, uh, and the return of Jesus Christ to the earth. So it also describes the specific event that will mark the beginning of that final seven year period. And that's the reason we call this prophesied event the prophecy with a date on it. Now, we don't give dates. And I've known a lot of people that got in trouble giving dates. Hey, this is going to happen on September 21st. Okay, we don't do that. But the Bible says once a specific event happens, then there's going to be a seven year period till the second coming of Jesus Christ and the battle of Armageddon. So once that event happens, we're going to be putting on our ma in our magazine. We're going to be on TV. We're going to be on the radio saying, folks, the final seven years just started. And you can pretty much hang your hat on that. You got about seven years left. The Bible's very, very, very specific. A lot of people call it Daniel's 70th week. Um, and it, you might recognize that, but it's the, it's the seven year period just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. So all we have to do is watch for the initial event that marks the beginning of that timeline to then know that only seven years remain until the culmination. It is of utmost importance that each of us understand this final seven year timeline of events. Because undoubtedly, our generation will live during the fulfillment of these prophecies. So in order to understand what lies just ahead, we have to remove those imaginary blindfolds that we were talking about by learning what the Bible prophesies about the events that will take place along that final seven year timeline. It's very, very important. So you say, well, what's, what, what starts, the, how, what am I looking for, Dave? Give me, give me some help here. Uh, what am I looking for? And a lot of you that watch the program regularly, you'll know what I'm talking about. The event that we're looking for that starts the final seven years is a Middle East peace treaty uh, between the Israelis and the Palestinians. That marks the beginning of the final seven years. The prophecy is found in Daniel 9, 27, and it prophesies that the Antichrist will confirm a covenant with many for a final seven year period. And this accord will be a confirmation of God's covenant with Abraham way back in Genesis uh, that Israel would always have a homeland in the promised land. It's found way back in Genesis 15, chapter 15, verse 18. And the fulfillment of this prophecy will be the signing of a peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. And this prophesied agreement is going to do three things. When you see a peace agreement in the near future that has these three characteristics with it, then you'll know that's the one that starts the final seven years. And if, if there's an agreement in the future that doesn't cover these three, then that's not the one. So that's the one we're looking for. It has to do these three things. So the three things are, number one, it, it will establish a Palestinian state in Judea, which is the modern day West Bank. When you, in, when you hear the news about the West Bank, well, that's, that's old Judea. They call it the West Bank today. It'll establish a Palestinian state there or a two-state solution. You've heard it in the news a lot. Number two, it will allow the Jewish settlers presently living in Judea to remain in their homes living as a Jewish minority under the new Palestinian state. A lot of people have said, oh, that's never going to happen. There's no way they're going to leave Jews living out there under the Palestinian um, rule. That's not true. If you, if you do your research, it's already been proposed. And Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, has said, yes, when, if we sign a two-state solution uh, and we have final borders with all the land swaps and everything, there are going to be people who live out beyond the border at that point in a future peace agreement. So they've already talked about it. It's already been proposed and they're willing to do it now. And the Bible says that that's what's going to happen. Number three, that it will, this Temple Mount will place the, this uh, peace agreement, will place the Temple Mount under an internationally supervised sharing arrangement. And it's going to allow both Jews and Muslims to worship there. And that, that peace agreement will allow them to build their third temple. So when you see the prophesied peace agreement, you can know assuredly that the final seven years to the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ has begun. Now there's something I have to mention because it's not in the final seven years, but it's something that I really need to mention because it could happen either just before or just after this peace agreement. And it's our opinion 
that it will happen just before uh, this peace agreement is signed. And that is the sixth trumpet war. So it must be noted that this war is coming and that it will emanate from the Middle East region and, the re and it will result in the killing of one third of the world's population. This war is called obviously the sixth trumpet war because it will occur at the sounding of the sixth trumpet as described in Revelation 9, verse 13 through 18. You understand that there's seven trumpets in the book of Revelation. The first five of those trumpets have already occurred. And the sixth one is the next event to occur on God's prophetic timeline. And it's this war that will kill one third of the world's population. So, like I said, this war will take place just before or shortly after the peace agreement is signed. The Bible does tell us that it must take place at the latest before that final three and a half years begins. So there's the seven year period. It's broken into two three and a half year segments. And we know that this war will happen before the final three and a half years begins. So, and honestly, folks, it could conceivably be happening at any time. Now, we could be fighting that war right now, possibly with ISIS. Now, I can't guarantee that, but I, I, like we talked about before, ISIS is like nothing we've ever seen. And so it is possible when we started the war on terrorism back with the bombings of 911 and the trade towers, it is possible that that started us down the path of World War III and this six trumpet war. And we actually could be fighting that war as we speak because you understand what ISIS is trying to do, total world domination, Sharia law implemented worldwide. So it's possible, it's very possible that we could be in this war right now and something will happen that will escalate um, to the point when, when the smoke clears from this war, one third of the world's population is gonna be destroyed. In the aftermath of this six trumpet war, in which 2.3 billion, 2.3 to 2.4, see we've got about 7 billion people on the earth right now. So about 2.3, 2.4 billion human beings will have died. The cry for a global organization, a world government that can prevent war will be deafening. Everybody, people that never wanted a world government at all, they're gonna be crying for it. They're gonna be saying, we can't have another world war. We have World War I, World War II. Now this war kills one third of the world's population. They're gonna be screaming for a world government to stop it. Well, the international community is going to adopt a world governing entity. And that's gonna eliminate the possibility, what they, they see it as eliminating the possibility of a global war ever taking place again. And it, folks, this has been in the works for years. This is not something new. If you follow this stuff at all, we're at the culmination of this stuff. The, the, the world government's been set up and been functioning for years. But at that time, the nations of the world will be willing, because they don't want another world war, they're gonna be willing to surrender their sovereignty to this new world government so that it can, as they see it, eliminate war completely. And this world government will be the culmination of years of planning that have already been in progress. Like I said, we're at the culmination of this. And for several years, it had been generally believed that there were two major causes for war on earth, conflicts between nations and conflicts between religions. I mean, look at all the conflict going on earth today. Everyone is a conflict either between nations for territory or it's conflict between religions, Islam and some other uh, religion that they call infidels or unbelievers. So their solution that they came up with was simple in the minds of these global leaders. Number one, do away with the nation states and, and tear down borders. Have you heard that lately? Don't put up a fence, tear down borders. We don't want to do away with nation states. People who believe in a one world governing body, they don't want any borders. They're willing to let refugees just come in uh, unhindered, illegal or not, just come one, come all. People who believe in that believe in a one world governing body. And they want to do away with the nation states and to force everyone on earth to pledge allegiance to one single ultimate political authority, a world government. This, this immigration thing that's going on right now, it's all about tearing down borders and letting people, they want one, a one global community that answers to, answers to a one world governing body. It's what all this stuff's about. 
And number two, they want to abolish the doctrinal differences between all religious organizations and coerce church leaders to sign declarations of unity with a single all-inclusive religious authority or they're going to establish a world religion. This is on the heels of this six trumpet war. Well, the Bible predicts that these two entities will be governed by a duo of the most deceitful, demonic human beings that have ever lived, period. To begin with, a leader will arise from Europe, this is Daniel 7, 8, that will have aided in the negotiations for the prophesied peace agreement that started the final seven years. He's going to be a great orator and an administrator, but with the, an ulterior motive in, um, in the mind of a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, clothing, if you will. And he will eventually seize the reins of influence and be the most powerful politician in Europe. Now, from this power base, he's going to maneuver himself into control of this emerging world government. At the beginning of his administration, this ascending world leader will be viewed by many as the next great peacemaker. They're going to think this guy's an awesome politician. He's the hope. He's the guy we've been looking for to finally make peace in the world. But to those who know their Bibles, it's going to be very deceptive. But to those who know their Bibles, he will shortly be recognized as the Antichrist. He's going to come on a platform of peace, but he's got an ulterior motive. And then simultaneously with the emergence of the prophesied world government, it's going to be the birth of a global religious system. Interfaithism and ecumen ecumenism are both efforts to establish this entity. This religious union will be founded on the belief that Jews, Muslims, and Christians all worship the same God while calling him by different names. Now, I've had people say, I've said that in our Bible studies before and, and on different, in different venues, and people have said, well, I'll never comply with that. There's no way I'm going to say that Jews, Muslims, and Christians all worship the same God. Muslims don't even believe that Jesus died on the cross. So there's no way that I can believe that we all worship the same God. But yet there will come a time when a world religion is established, and if you don't want to comply with that, you're going to be considered religiously exclusive. And so consequently, you're going to be an outcast. Because, hey, you don't want to comply with this one world religion, this one world government, so you're an extremist. I'm I've, I've actually a religious extremist. And so consequently, you're going, to be, you're going to be shoved aside. You're going to be shoved off to the edge. That you're not going to be allowed into the group because you don't agree. And interfaithism uh, will attempt to embrace all religions of the world. Look at it now, all these interfaith movements that are being put together. And, and they're having everybody come. And it doesn't really matter who you worship. Just come one, come all, and let's just all agree. Let's put our doctrinal differences aside. And let's just all show up to these interfaith movements. And even they, they have Wiccans, Zoroastrians. Wic Wiccans are witches. They have all, any, it doesn't matter what you believe or who you worship. In some convoluted way, we all worship the same God, so let's just all come and get along. So interfaithism, ecumenism, is an effort to join all the Protestant religions under one umbrella. Set your doctrines aside, and let's all just agree and love each other. Well, loving each other is great, but I still have to go by what's in the Bible. The doctrines of the Bible will save us, so we've got to follow those doctrines. So even though I love an individual... I can't walk away from the doctrines of the Bible and say, well, the Bible is about, the Bible does talk about love. Yeah, it sure does. And God is all about love. But he also has a Bible that we have to follow. And we've got to follow those doctrines. So by the midway point of the final seven years, we're moving towards, during the, during the first three and a half years, the temple's going to be rebuilt. This world religion, this world government's going to be coming to power. And the, the world government led by the Antichrist and the world religion uh, it's found in uh, Revelation 13 and 17 and 18. You, you can read all about it. Uh, the world religion headed by the false prophet. They're going to have control over the majority of the world's population. The Bible's very, very clear. So 
the first three and one half years, when the final years, when the final seven years finally begins, when that peace agreement signed and on the heels of the war, we're starting to move towards this world religious body, this world government, which they're already being established as we speak. It lets us know we're, we're so close to the second coming. When the final seven years begins, this is Revelation 11, 1 and 2, it states that the Temple Mount in Jerusalem will be placed under a sharing arrangement between Jews and Muslims. The Jewish people will be allowed to build their third temple. That's, this is um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, and Revelation 11, verse 1 and 2. And they're going to be able to build their third temple on the Temple Mount. When the temple is completed, animal sacrifices are going to be resumed. That's Daniel 9, 27, just as they did in the Old Testament. You remember the Old Testament plan of salvation where they had the first two temples on the Temple Mount. They would take up and do an animal sacrifice to atone for the sins of the people. Well, they're going, that's why they're wanting to build a third temple so they can resume that ritual. Well, the offering of animal sacrifices in the temple, it's going to quickly escalate into world crisis. The animal rights activists, they're going to go nuts. They're going to demand that the Antichrist stop the slaughter of animals. The dis, this dispute over the animal sacrifices are quickly going to lead to an event called the abomination of desolation. So before the break, I want to make sure we're tracking along with what I'm talking about. Let me recap real quick. There's going to be a final seven year period and it's just ahead of us now. We could be fighting the six trumpet war as we speak. It's very possible. And we're talking about preparing now if and I'm going to talk about the, pre the preparation part here in the next segment of the program. If you're on a radio program that just uh, watches uh, or just shows the, the first 30 minutes, then go to endtime.com and you can hear the next 30 minutes where we're talking about the preparation, the, 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 the physical uh, preparation and, the, and number, most importantly, the spiritual preparation for the times just ahead because you don't want to walk through these times just ahead not, having these pre not being prepped for it and have some preparation already done because it's, it's going to be a mess. It's a minefield, folks. You don't want to walk through it with a blindfold on, so go to endtime.com. Taking the train home from work today? How about taking one of our video lessons along for the ride on your mobile device? Download lessons to watch at your convenience, like the End Time University semesters, designed to take you down the path to spiritual maturity. Wherever your ride may take you today, you can take End Time University along the way. You can also download the companion study workbooks. Easily refer to these on your mobile device to review key points in each lesson. Then take a quiz and check your answers at the end. Who knew the train would be such a great place to do an end time Bible study? Go to endtime.com slash door and click downloads to find many video lessons and PDF workbooks. Jesus said that there would be a particular generation that would see specific things take place. And this would be the people that would see his second coming to the earth. The big question is, can we know this generation? Jesus talked about it in Matthew 24. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and put out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. In the DVD, This Generation Shall Not Pass, Irvin discusses the events that must occur that will let us know the generation that shall not pass until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Get this enlightening lesson by calling 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com. If your radio station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com to continue to listen to today's broadcast. Well, welcome back, everybody. And I love going through this timeline because it gives it gives such clarity. I mean, I love getting on here. We do every day we get on here and we hit news articles and we tell you what's going on and keep you up to date. But if you don't understand this final seven year timeline and all of the events that will take place, then you kind, you're kind of left out of the loop a little bit because a lot of the a lot of the articles that we go over every day and all the news that we get from overseas and everything if you don't understand what's coming ahead of us, 
then you're kind of like, what, 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 I'm not 100% sure what they're talking about. So, but once you understand the prophecies and you know what's coming just ahead of us, then when we talk about um, the, the Temple Mount, there's a, there's a bill in the Knesset right now in Israel to share the Temple Mount. Well, when we talk about an article like that, then when you can say, well, hold on a minute. The Bible says that during the final seven years that the Temple Mount is going to be placed under a sharing arrangement. So it becomes much more meaningful if you understand this final seven years and what's going to happen, all of the events that are going to happen. Then when we go through the, uh, some different articles and we talk about this stuff, then you're like, okay, now I can connect the dots. It's very, very important. So we're walking through the timeline and then we're going to talk about some preparation, things, things you need to do, one of the main important things. And at the midway point, uh, in the final seven years is an event called the abomination of desolation. Israel, during the first three and a half years, is going to rebuild her third temple, is going to build her third temple. They're going to resume animal sacrifices. And then right in the midst, at the three and a half year point of the final seven years, the abomination of desolation will occur. Once we reach the middle of that final seven and a half year period, period prophetic fulfillments, they're going to rapidly increase. Things will kind of be rolling along the first three and a half years. And many events will happen uh, at this three and a half year point. Many events are going to happen simultaneously. It sets a lot of stuff in motion once this abomination of desolation event happens. The first of these events will be the stopping of the sacrifices uh, at the abomination of desolation. Daniel 1131 foretells this event. It said, and arms shall stand on his part, talking about the Antichrist, and they, the Antichrist and his partners, shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. So it appears that stopping the sacrifices and the event called the abomination of desolation, that's going to occur at that time. And then apparently the Antichrist will explain that uh, you know, the sacrifices, will are, they're no longer needed because I'm God. I'm the Messiah here. I'm the one you've been looking for. And then um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 states that he will sit in the temple of God while claiming to be God. So in this passage, the Apostle Paul actually described this event as the revealing of the man of sin, the Antichrist. So at this point, we've had so many people. I've got, had some guy send me an, an email, I think it was just yesterday, and say, hey, you guys say the Antichrist is alive on the earth today. Who do you think it is? You know, give me some of your candidates. Well, I can throw out a ton of people that I think it is. But even, even though the Antichrist will be involved in signing the peace agreement in the very beginning, we won't know specifically. He'll be involved in it. But we won't know specifically that that's the guy. But he'll, he'll probably be involved in a coalition of uh, nations that help get it signed. But the Bible says he's specifically revealed at this event called the Abomination of Desolation. That's when we're going to go on the TV and the radio and we're going to be screaming, this is the guy. Up to, this, up to that point, we won't be able to do that. We'll kind of know, but we'll know for 100% once this Abomination of Desolation occurs. And I should also mention at this point that whoever, whoever is the Pope at the time of the abomination of desolation, he's going to assume the role as the false prophet. He will be the leader of the world religious system that's been set up. And he's going to perform miracles before the people of the world. It's Revelation 13, 13 through 14. And through these miracles, he will influence the world to pledge its allegiance to the Antichrist. He's actually going to call fire down from heaven at one point. So also at this point, the, the abomination of desolation is when the great tribulation begins. Remember, I said several events happen right there. Boom, boom, boom. It just simultaneously. So the great tribulation, it, that final three and a half years is the great tribulation. And it happens right there with the abomination of desolation. There's going to be a war in heaven. In Daniel, uh, this is in Daniel 12, 1 and Revelation 12, 7 through 10. And Michael and his angels defeat Satan and his angels, and they confine them to the earth. Revelation 12, 12 says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that he hath but a short time. 
So this is the beginning of the final three and a half years of tribulation when Satan will persecute Israel and the true church of Jesus Christ. This is the same tribulation period that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 15 through 21. So once the abomination of desolation occurs, Jesus warned the Jews living in Judea or the West Bank to flee into the mountains. He said, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So he said, when you see the abomination of desolation occur, let them which be in Judea flee. For there's going to be great tribulation like you've never seen. And in the midst of all this chaos, God is going to send his two witnesses. This is Revelation 11.3. They come on the scene right here at that three and a half year mark. And they begin their ministries, which will last the next 1260 days or that three and a half year period. Now, let's talk about the last three and one half years. It's very, very important that you understand what happens during the final three and one half years. Some, some places the Bible says it's 1260 days. Some places the Bible says 42 months. Talking about the, the time of the tribulation. Some place the, the, um, the Bible says that it's um, time times and half a times. So it's, but it's all that last three and a half years is the tribulation. There's no, there's no scriptures for a seven year tribulation. There's only scriptures several places uh, where the Bible says it's a three and a half year tribulation. So during the last half of the final seven years, many events will occur, setting the stage, obviously, for the Battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ, because that's what we're leading up to here. Remember, it's the final seven years just prior to the second coming. And it's at this time that the Antichrist and the false prophet will fully implement the economic system known as the Mark of the Beast. Obviously, most of you know about that. It's found in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 through 18. Economic control will be used to force the citizens of the world to comply with the dictates of the one world government and the one world religion. The plan will be to give everyone on earth their own unique identification number that will be necessary to function in society. If any individual does not submit, obey, or pledge allegiance to the Antichrist and his supreme authority, that person's number will be invalidated. He will not be able to hold a job, or to participate in the global economy. So think about that. I mean, I, there's already, pre, we're watching precursors to this right now. In Uganda, if you don't have your national ID card, you don't have any access to travel, to education for your children, no health care, no job. I mean, you can't function at all without your national ID card. In North Korea, if you don't have your, na if you're caught without your national ID card, you're sent, to, you're sent to a concentration camp. That's in North Korea in 2016. And so a lot, and, and most nations on earth are already functioning under a national ID, national identification system, where you rely on that number to function in society. So that we're watching precursors of this. It's already being set up around the world. And they're trying to set it up here in the United States. So what I want you to do, though, let's, let's kind of stop right here because we're walking through this final seven-year timeline. You say, well, hold on. You're supposed to be talking about prepping. How do I prepare myself for this final seven years? I, you're throwing all this information at me, but you're not telling me how to prepare. Well, as we walk through here, imagine yourself on earth at that time. There, look, look ahead in your mind and say, okay, there's a world government is fully established and functioning under the absolute authority of the Antichrist. Think about that. And as a result, the Antichrist is going to demand that all citizens of the world will pledge allegiance to him and his world governing system. Then if that's not bad enough, there's also a global religion on earth that everyone is being coerced to participate in. The only problem is that it will be a false religion that is diametrically opposed to the Bible. And any true Christian will not be able to align their beliefs with the false teachings of that entity. So what do, what do we do? How, will, how do we prepare for that time? Can you think of a time in history when we might have had a similar situation as this. Let's ask ourselves that. Well, actually there was a time. 
If you remember back in the Bible, the apostles, the apostles established churches and preached the gospel of the kingdom far and wide under the reign of a world government. The Roman Empire ruled the entire known world from 197 AD, 197 BC to 284 AD. And that is why there were Roman soldiers at Jesus' crucifixion and Jesus was taken before a Roman judge, Pontius Pilate. They were occupying forces there to, in Jerusalem to make sure the laws of Rome, uh, of Rome were obeyed. So, and in, in, in Acts uh, 528 says that, they, that the apostles filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. The apostles were able to do great, mighty things Set up, they established churches everywhere, had great revivals, did many mighty works because they were led by the Spirit of God at that point. And so when you look back, they were under the reign of a world government. They did a lot of things because they were led by the Spirit of God. It's very, very key in looking at how we're going to make it just ahead. This is exactly how we, in the times just ahead, are going to make it. It's very, very critical that we look back and we say, okay, the apostles, 2,000 years ago, they were under the reign of a world government. And so did they go into fear mode and start hiding and <clears throat> couldn't function at all? No. Those guys filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. They set up churches. All, look, at, look at all the churches that were established in the New Testament. Ephesus, Corinth, a church in Rome. I mean, there were, there's churches all over the place. They filled Jerusalem with their doctrine while under the reign of a world governing body. And yet they still, they still were able to do all of that. Why? Because they were led by the Spirit of God. They prayed, they had a relationship with the Lord, and the Lord would lead and guide them. He would move on them. Hey, go over here and preach here. Nope, don't go over there. I want you to preach here. The Holy Ghost would speak to them, and that's how they ran their lives. And so in looking at the times just ahead... That's how we're going to have to function. We're going to have to be led by the Spirit of God. I asked somebody um, this morning, hey, how, what, how are we going to have to function? How can we prepare for the times just ahead during the final seven years? They're just ahead of us. And this individual told me we're going to have to be led by the Spirit of God. That's exactly what it is. You say, well, hold on a minute. Being led by the Spirit of God, what does that mean? I tell you what. I'll answer that question. We're coming up to a break, and I don't want to get into it. Uh, I don't want the break's going to cut us off here. But we're going to talk about being led by the Spirit of God because if you're going to go through the times just ahead, you need to prepare yourself spiritually for that time. If you're not prepared spiritually, nothing else really matters. And so we're going to talk about that when we get back from the break. It's very critical being led by the Spirit of God in the times just ahead. What an incredibly important subject we have today, Islam in Bible prophecy. It hasn't been many years since those planes flew into the trade towers in New York City, and suddenly the attention of the world was riveted on this religion, Islam, that very few of us knew very much about. But if you had to guess the religion of a suicide bomber, what religion would you guess? Now, could this religion, this huge religion, be totally absent from the prophecies of the Bible? We're going to find out today. It's not true. Islam is in your Bible. To order our DVDs, Islam in Bible Prophecy, and Will Islam Rule the World, call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com. So we've been walking through the final seven years, and it's, it's, it's very critical that you understand, like I said before, those prophecies and those events. Many of you, we've went over it so many times, and we'll go over it hundreds of more times, because you've got to understand. There, there may come a time when we can't have a television show anymore. End time won't be on the air anymore. There, that may come a time in the future. They may cut all this off. 
and you may be in <clears throat> living somewhere where you can't get down here. And so you, it's funny because I've talked to so many people that said, hey, once all this stuff starts coming down, we're coming to Dallas. And me and my father-in-law, Irvin, have talked about it and said, you realize how full our parking lot's going to be once all this stuff starts coming down. And we, we, we laugh about it now, but I mean, it's, I know it's going to happen. I can see it. Uh, and that's why God, I believe God gave us this giant building. Uh, who knows what it won't turn into a, a giant shelter at any point. The, 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 the fact is, is that in how are we going to make it through these troubled waters that are just ahead? Because for some people, it's going to rock them back on their heels. Imagine a world government, a, a, an absolute world government comes into power and it's got teeth. It, it will be able to dictate to you how to live, how not to live. And the Antichrist is going to set at the helm of that. Then a world religion is going to be established. And if you don't want to comply with that, then Gorbachev in his book, Perestroika, actually said, here's what we need. You're going to be considered religiously exclusive. Gorbachev said in his book, you guess what we need to do with all religiously exclusive individuals? We need to extirpate them. Well, extirpate means to kill off. He actually put that in his book. We need to kill off all religiously exclusive individuals. So you're going to be feeling pressure to conform to this one world governing body, to pledge allegiance to that, to conform to this one world religion, and to align yourself and your beliefs with that. And they're going to use the mark of the beast to try to economically sanction you to get you to conform to that. You say, well, how in the world are we going to function uh, a lot of people had the, have had the question, we call in here, we talk about it all the time. Should I go into prepper mode? Should I start storing up food? Should I start storing up, uh, put cash under my mattress? Do I need to move? Uh, yeah, I know during Y2K, a lot, I know a guy specifically um, that uh, moved to Oklahoma. He bought a big property, started moving trailers in there, and a bunch of people sold everything they had because they thought the, everything's going to collapse, the, the, the electrical grid's going to go down, and it's all going to be a mess. And he moved a bunch of people up there and lost a ton of money. He lost his shirt because he really didn't understand the prophecies of the Bible, and he thought that it was going to come down. So you say, well, how in the world? Well, you know, what do I do, Dave? Go into prepper mode? I mean, do, tell me what we got to do. Well, at this point... I'm sitting here, end of July in 2016. Some of those questions, the physical prepper questions, what do we store up? It probably wouldn't hurt you to have some food stored up, really for any kind of emergency. I mean, I've got a, uh, I think me and Jan have either one or two buckets of those, um, the food that you can, you know, put, boil it and, and uh, throw the food in there and make that and it lasts 25 years. I may have one or two buckets of that stuff. Well, that would keep me, if something happened for at least a couple, two or three weeks to where I could get out and figure out what was going on in case we got hit with something immediately. So there are some things you could probably do. And what I have, I've sent this out a lot. I had a guy put together a huge packet that showed me some different things to do in case we would ever get hit by a nuclear bomb here in Dallas or what, any, uh, several different scenarios. He put me together a packet of different things, just basic things you could do that could really increase your chance of survival. Now, if you email me, drobbins at endtime.com, I'd be happy to send that to you. It's a, I've got it in electronic form. I can send it to you. You read through it. It's really informative and it'll really help you out. And I would ask that if anybody out there has anything that they would like to share, hey, end time, you guys have a huge platform. I've got some stuff I've come up with that in the future you could possibly do this. Prepper type stuff. Uh, send it to me. drobbins at endtime.com. I'd be happy to look through it. Uh, and if it's legit stuff, I'll share it with people. I've got, you can't imagine how many emails I've got of people over the years saying, what do we do? So there are some things you can do physically, physical preparation. But the number one thing that you, that you need to do is to be a spirit-led individual. You say, what in the world? I've told that to people on the phone for years and they're like, what in the world are you talking about? Spirit-led individual. What? That, that's so foreign to a lot of people because they've never been taught. They've never been around anybody who was spirit-led. 
And it's, but it's the way we're going to have to function. You remember when I talked about the apostles during the time of a world governing body, Rome, they did all kinds of mighty things. They built the kingdom of God in the, in the beginning right there. They set up churches everywhere. They, they shared the gospel of the kingdom far and wide under the reign of a world government because they were led by the spirit of God. And that's how we're going to function in the times just ahead. So let me tell you what I'm talking about because it's very, very key. Number one, in an effort to be led by the spirit of God, you really need to start seeking God's face in, in prayer. Number one, it's very easy. A, a lot of people, they, they, they think about prayer and they think, I don't even know how to pray. I, you know, we pray over our meal at Thanksgiving and that's good enough for me. Well, that's actually not good enough. Let's just let me throw all the cards out on the table here. That's just praying for Thanksgiving meal. That's not enough prayer, folks. That's not going to get you through the times just ahead. If in the times just ahead, you're going to be, have to be in tune with God. And you're going to have to be asking him for direction and guidance for your life. You can't rely on your own intellect to get you through these times just ahead. Because the times just ahead are a battle between evil and good. It's God trying to establish his kingdom here on earth. And it's Satan trying to establish his kingdom here on earth. The world government that's being established is the Bible says that the dragon give him his seat, his power and his great authority. Satan is behind the establishment of a world government here on earth. And God, through the, his saints, through his church, is trying to establish his government here on earth. Now, at the second coming of Jesus Christ, the Lord's going to come back and he's going to tear down human government. Satan's going to lose. If you didn't know that already, Satan loses in the end. The church wins. I can tell you, I've already read the back of the book. I know what happens. But up until that time, there's going to be a battle between good and evil, right and wrong, truth and a lie. And that's, and you can't rely on your intellect to get you through that because there's a, it's a spiritual warfare. So you need to get in tune with the Lord in a spiritual sense so he can direct you. He can give you a sound mind. A lot of people are fearful of the times just ahead. But the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. If you are in tune with the Lord and he's leading and guiding and directing your life, you don't, you, you're not going to be in fear mode. You're going to be working for him, living for him, doing his will in your life. And you're going to be, I'm, honestly, I know this is going to sound weird to some people. But Irvin, myself, us here at End Time, people we run with, that we're, we're excited. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy to some people, but we're excited because the time's just ahead. You can look at it one of two ways. You can go into fear mode and say, oh, the, uh, all the stuff's going to happen and you know, we're not going to know what to do. Or you can get into evangelism mode, get into a good church, start building the kingdom of God, teaching Bible studies, winning the lost, doing all you can to live for God during the times just ahead and be spirit led. You start winning the lost. You start a daily prayer life, start studying the word of God and you will see it's, it's, a, it's a miracle. God will start leading and guiding your life. I personally haven't done this. I have not lived this way my entire life. I, 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 I was raised in a, a volatile home and I went through high school. I got out of high school. I went into construction. I worked construction for 20 years. And I, I thought, hey, it's all about making money. How much money can I make? What can I buy? The next nice car, the next big house, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's, I'm living the American dream. I had a very good job making great money. And my father-in-law came to me and said, Dave, I, I think it's God's will that you come to work at End Time. And I was like, what in the world am I going to do at End Time? End Time's a spiritual entity. You guys are, you know, I, I just, what, I, I'm like a, a fish out of water here. But something hit me inside and said, this is, this is it. This is your why in the road. This is the, what, what you need to take. And it was God leading me by, I could feel him drawing me by his spirit. And so I did it. And it's been a great thing. And I, <clears throat> I went from living for myself to living to help people. And when, that's why when we say end time ministries, we actually mean the ministry part. 
if you've ever talked to us on the phone or anything, people realize that we care and we're truly trying to get them through this. So that's why I'm not on the radio today trying to sell you food to store up or trying to sell you a, 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 back pa a prepper pack, a, a bug out pack. I'm not doing that. And I'm, I'm not downing anybody who's trying to do that because there may come a time when we need to do that. But I'm trying to help you with the number one absolute thing you need to do, and that's to prepare yourself spiritually for the times just ahead. Number one, you need to be born again. Jesus said, except a person is born again, you can't even enter or see the kingdom of God. You say, well, what do you mean born again? That's great. We've got a tract here called, what do you mean born again? Because we get that question all the time. Now, Irvin yesterday on the program went through the salvation package. And the salvation package is awesome. It's Irvin teaching and it's great. And it, it teaches you all you need to know about being born again. But we've got a free tract here. What do you mean born again? Call, ask for the tract. We'll send it to you. Email me, drobbins at endtime.com. I'll send you a copy of the track. What do you mean born again? Because it will start you on your road to being a spirit-led individual. You can move closer to God. When you move closer to God, he starts to talk to you. And you can, you, it's amazing. You can pray and it's like God says, I'm pulling you to do this. It's not a, I've never heard an audible voice, but it's like an unction that you feel that says, I, I've got to do this. And it's God pulling you. And you will learn through the course of time, through prayer and devotion, you'll learn to recognize the voice of God. And it will pull you to go in this direction. Don't go over here and do this. I want you doing this. And when you start following after that voice, you're being led by the Spirit of God. I can tell you instance after instance in this ministry and in my own personal life, one of the main ones is when I came here to End Time Ministries. I was, following the, the, I was following the Spirit pulling me. I felt it tugging at me. And that's how you can start your journey. Be born again and start uh, daily prayer life. You say, daily prayer life? What in the? I've never done that. You, need, you really need to start talking to God. If you're going to want to spend eternity with Him, you probably ought to talk to Him and develop a relationship. So this is the number one thing. At some point in the future, we may come on the radio and say, look, you guys need to, you know, you, you got to purchase some food. You got to do this. There may come a time when we do that. At this point, we really don't know what to say about physical preparation. But spiritual preparation I know that in intricate detail, how to help you with that. And that's the number one most important thing. In the times just ahead, in the troubled waters that we're going to face, you've got to be spiritually prepared. Because remember what I said, it's a spiritual battle. It's a battle against Satan versus God. And it's going to culminate at the Battle of Armageddon. The Lord's going to come back at a second coming, tear down human government and establish His government here on earth for a thousand years and you've got to be in tune spiritually if you want to turn spend eternity with him end of the age is a production of end time ministries this broadcast will be available on our website, endtime.com, in the archive section. On our website, you'll also find more information about how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. To reach our operators, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. End Time Ministries is partner-supported. We would like to say thank you to our partners who made this broadcast possible. To do what Matthew 24, 14 said, to reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom.